Hello and welcome to our Facebook Live from the Paley Orthopedic and Spine Institute in West Palm Beach, Florida and the Southeastern United States. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join me. This is the first in a series of upcoming talks about stature lengthening. Today I'll give you a quick review. In the coming weeks we'll dive in with more detail and answer your questions. So, what is stature lengthening? Put simply, Stature lengthening is a cosmetic procedure for individuals who wish to be taller. The majority of people who seek this surgery are unhappy with their body image. We generally discuss length gained using the metric system. It's easy to convert between metric and standard. One inch is approximately two and a half centimeters. How much height can I gain? With one round of surgery, it's possible to safely add up to 8 centimeters, which is 3.1 inches in the femurs. The femurs are the thigh bones. Up to 5 centimeters, which is 2 inches in the tibias. The tibias are the shin bones. And even up to 10 centimeters, which is 4 inches, combined in both the femurs and the tibias. Most people have heard of limb lengthening for people with one leg shorter than the other. This can be from a variety of reasons, including past trauma, infection, tumor, or a problem they were born with. For example, this woman developed severe bowing in both of her legs during childhood. This picture was taken after her left side had been surgically corrected. Notice the bowing and shortening of her right leg. The blocks are placed under her foot until her pelvis is level. The block height approximates her leg length difference. We use simpler techniques to lengthen the legs for stature. This is the same patient standing next to his wife before and after stature lengthening surgery at the Paley Institute. Why do people want stature lengthening? This is a complex question with a complex answer. Different people have different motivations and desires. There are significant racial, cultural, gender, and national considerations. But there are similarities between patients that center around how someone perceives their height in a negative way. Prospective patients have reported all of my friends are taller than me. I have a hard time dating because I'm short. Height is important for business success. I'm insecure about my height. My partner, Dr. Paley, worked with a psychologist named Walter Windisch between 1988 and 2008. They coined the terms height dysphoria or height neurosis to describe this. While a person's actual height is related to the condition, there is no height threshold under which you cannot suffer from height dysphoria or height neurosis. The process for stature lengthening is very straightforward. Through a small incision, holes are drilled in the bone to weaken it. The top of the bone is opened through a small incision and a lengthening rod is placed in the hollow canal. The bone is broken completely and the rod is locked in position above and below the fracture with screws. Lengthening starts one week after surgery. After you stop lengthening, normal bone gradually fills the gap. These are the typical size and location for femur lengthening scars. Here is a right femur x-ray superimposed. The top incision by the hip is where we enter and hollow the bone and insert the lengthening rod. The middle incision is where we break the bone. The next incision is for the top screws to hold the rod in place. The lower incision is for the bottom screws to hold the rod in place. The incision by the knee is where we loosen tissue that hinders lengthening. It reforms by the end of lengthening. How do we do it and how long does it take? Lengthening is performed by the patient at home using a portable device called an ERC. It does not hurt. It takes about one minute for each session. The ERC is programmed specifically for each patient. We add length in one quarter millimeter increments. This is about one one hundredth of an inch. Remember that one inch is about 2.5 centimeters. Lengthening starts one week after surgery. We lengthen the femurs four times per day and the tibias three times per day. The amount of time it takes is directly related to the amount of length you gain. Three inches in the femur takes almost 11 weeks. Two inches in the tibias takes 10 weeks. Here is a time progression of x-rays of a patient who completed 8 centimeters or 3.1 inches of lengthening in both femurs. 
he was in his late 40s. This is his x-ray two weeks after he started lengthening. Two weeks later, two weeks later, two weeks later, and at the end of eight centimeters. It took 80 days to achieve eight centimeters. Note the increasing gap in the bone over time. You can even see the early bone healing in the gap. This x-ray was taken two months after he finished eight centimeter of lengthening and the bone is almost completely healed. What happens to the stuff that isn't bone? The bone is obligated to lengthen because it is bolted to the lengthening rod. The other stuff isn't. The other stuff is called the soft tissues. It includes everything that isn't bone, muscle, skin, nerves, blood vessels. These tissues must grow and adapt to the lengthening just like the bone does. The difference is that they can and do resist lengthening and make it harder the more length you gain. A critical component for a successful stature lengthening is the physical therapy. It is mandatory and necessary. Our patients stay local during the entire lengthening process. They undergo formal physical therapy at the institute five times per week. They stretch at home two to three hours per day. Success and recovery are directly related to your participation in physical therapy and home exercises. Safety always comes first. While there is no guarantee for length gained, we guarantee your safety is our number one priority. We will never sacrifice length for function. We define success as your ability to return to normal function and participate in desired activities. The problems and complications that can occur are not unique to cosmetic stature lengthening. These can occur with any orthopedic surgery, whether it's elective or not. Serious medical problems include blood clots in the legs called deep venous thrombosis. If a blood clot moves to the lungs, that's called a pulmonary embolism. When the bone is broken and the bone canal is hollowed for the rod, this releases bone marrow in the bloodstream. Bone marrow contains fat. This bone marrow is filtered by the lungs. Very rarely, the fat can injure the lungs, leading to a dangerous condition called fat embolism syndrome. At the Paley Institute, we are very aware of these complications and we use techniques and protocols to limit them. These include using oral anticoagulation, such as aspirin or Xeralto, and compression devices on the legs after surgery. We will immediately mobilize you after surgery and get you out of bed as soon as possible. Complications of limb lengthening with internal nails are well known and well described. As with the potential medical complications, they are not unique to cosmetic stature lengthening. These include device breakage or failure to lengthen the bone, insufficient regenerate or not healing, developing a deformity in the shape of the bone, fracture, joint contracture or subluxation. Problems during limb lengthening tend to happen slowly. We have lots of time to recognize and treat them. How long does it take to recover? The recovery time is related to the amount of length gained and how much therapy you do. For example, it takes 80 days of lengthening to achieve eight centimeters of length in the femurs. Remember that lengthening starts one week after surgery, so that's about three months. With today's implant, you are restricted to 50 or 75 pounds of weight per leg until the bone heals or consolidates. It generally takes as much time to heal or consolidate as it did to achieve the length. So for an eight centimeter femur lengthening, it's another three months using crutches or a walker until the bone is healed. After you have enough healing, you stop the walker and regain strength and stamina and gradually return to activities. It's about one year to walk normally. It's about two years to return to competitive sports. What can you do to prepare for stature surgery? If you haven't already, get into a healthy lifestyle routine. Work out and stretch regularly so your muscles are less sore from therapy after surgery. In addition to being detrimental to health in general, smoking and vaping are absolute contraindications to elective surgery. Do not do it. Not only do they slow bone and tissue healing, but they can potentially increase your risk for medical complications such as blood clots and fat embolism. If your vitamin D3 level is low, start taking supplements. Also, arrange for your absence. You will be away from home, school, work, friends, and family for a few months. 
Some patients come alone and some bring friends and family. At the Paley Institute, our stature patients often stay at the same hotel, so they have an instant peer group. Thank you for watching our video. Stay tuned on your social media feeds for upcoming episodes related to stature lengthening. I will go into much more detail about the surgical techniques and logistics for undergoing cosmetic stature lengthening at the Paley Institute. I will also review and discuss medical and surgical complications and problems that can arise in more detail. On the left is a QR code for the Paley Stature Center. In the middle is my email address. Please send me questions, comments, or suggestions for future topics. And thank you again for your time.